Hey guys, what is going on? I hope you all are doing well today. Elliot here and welcome back to The Fragrance Well. So I figured it is time for me to go ahead and do a list like this where I just talk about fragrances that I always want in my collection. Now, I'm only gonna do 10 today, but if I'm being honest, there's a lot of fragrances in my collection that I definitely always want to have, but I can't talk about all of them because the video will probably just go on forever. But all that being said, that is today's video. Keep 10 fragrances forever. On any given day, the list of 10 that I'm presenting could change because it could always depend on how I'm feeling that day. Some days fragrances are your favorite and other days, another one is the favorite. You just, you know, all of those things kind of play into what is your uh, most important fragrance at any given time when you have so many. But that's neither here nor there. Before we get started with the video, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you like the content, and remember to hit that bell icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. Let's get into it. All right, without further ado, keep 10 forever. First up, we've got Amwaj's Interlude Man. Amwaj, Interlude Man. Uh, from the house um, of Amwaj in particular, there's a lot of fragrances I honestly want to keep forever, but I'm only going to pick one. I'm not going to make the whole video about Amwaj, but Interlude Man, love at first sniff. Uh, this clearly proved that I am a fan of incensey, smoky, leathery fragrances. This one definitely delivers that. Pretty much a powerhouse from the house of Amwaj, one of their most well known scents. I know the oregano note in the opening of this fragrance makes this one a little tough for some people. It was never a problem for me. I love every facet of this fragrance and I am always going to have it in my collection. I wouldn't necessarily always call this one my favorite from the house, but I do think this is one of the best fragrances they've ever put out. Keep this one forever. Amwaj Interlude. Next up, coming from the house of Dior, we've got Dior Homme Parfum. Dior Homme Parfum. In my opinion, out of the, I don't know, let's just call it the Legacy Ohm line from Dior with the Iris, this is the best iteration. You've still got that very rich and creamy Iris, but it's not as sweet in this one, even though I would consider the Iris in Intense and even the original Ohm not overly sweet, but they have more sweetness than this does. This is much darker, has a lot more of the leather that I really enjoy in the original Ohm that is not as present in the Intense to me. And that's what the basic makeup of this fragrance, deep, dark Iris with a lot of leathery, uh, dark leathery undertones to it. Wears great on the skin, smells great in the air. In my opinion, yes, this can definitely be uh, a worthy contender in the fight for the best designer fragrance ever released. Obviously that is completely objective, but I'm putting in my vote for it. Definitely one of the best designers ever. I'm definitely gonna have this bottle in my collection forever, mainly because I'm not gonna go fighting for it if something happens to this. I just don't plan to use all of it, but I'll do my best to not damage it or break it or anything. Once again, from the house of Dior, Dior Om Parfum. Moving on, from the house of Arabian Oud, we've got Blue Oud. Arabian Ouds, Blue Oud, and this, by the way, does include the pure oil. Stunning, stunning stuff. Ah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Gotta have this one in the collection. Uh, this fragrance here is a great representation of what Oud oils on their own can be. To me, in many ways, if you have the chance to walk into an Arabian Oud boutique to a degree, when you smell it, that's kind of what this fragrance smells like. If they are burning uh, oud chips or uh, wood fragments in the store. I've been to two of them so far. The one in Houston, Texas was burning wood at that time. So it definitely pretty much smells like how this fragrance smells, which is awesome. I went to one in Philadelphia. They were not burning wood chips, so it smelled a little bit different. But it just shows you what oud can be, which is so many things. And it's not just something that smells fecal or animalic, like a lot of people seem to think. Of course, it smells woody, it is wood, but it also has uh, incense -y characteristics, it has green characteristics, resinous characteristics, uh, even some fruity and sweet characteristics. Oud can do a lot for you. There's a reason it's the most expensive perfume oil on the planet, at least when it's good quality. But yeah, gotta have this one just because of that alone. From the house of Arabian Oud, this is Blue Oud. All right, so next up, coming from the house of Nishane, we've got Hasavat. Nishane's Hasavat. 
So this one deserves to always be in my collection because the most realistic and tangible method anybody can use to show what is a perfume that you wear a lot and really like is how much of it you've actually used up. You can't see it in the video, but this is about down to here last time I held it up to some light. That's almost 50% gone. I have no other fragrance in my collection that's even close to that uh, used up. And uh, also I've had this for just over a year, if I'm not mistaken. I got it, I think at the beginning of last summer. So year and some months and I'm almost halfway through it. And considering all the fragrances I have and uh, my <laughs> intentional effort to try not to repeat perfumes, I have still went through this much of that bottle, which is insane. You probably know it well, lots of bergamot and pineapple, sharing a bit of a similarity to Adventus, but it's not the same thing, and also very dry woods and a lot of oak moss. That's the essence of this fragrance. I love the smell. Look, living in Florida, it's like the perfect scent to have as an option when you're living in such a humid and hot environment. And most importantly, I genuinely love this scent DNA. I do think this is superior to Aventus, but yeah. So if I had to have one Aventus style fragrance, it would pretty much be this one. And the amount of wears I have given this, or should I say how much juice is gone, pretty much shows that. So Nishane's Hasabat, always going to be in my collection. Probably need to get another bottle. All right, next up from the house of Marc Antoine Barat, we've got Ganymede. Marc Antoine Barat's Ganymede. So this one here is definitely one of the uh, most unique scents in my fragrance collection. I don't have anything that really smells even close to this. I know there are other iterations or creations really by the same perfumer even of this style of scent out there, but I like this one. It's also the one I have and I gotta have it in my collection. I love that mineralic nature to it. I love how the saffron is used in here. You got the spiciness, the woodiness, kind of a suede leatheriness to it. Just a, such an interesting creation. This is another one I've also just featured in a lot of videos since I got the fragrance. So <laughs> I've been intentionally keeping it off some list to not, you know, just kind of outwear this one's welcome on the channel, but it's always going to be in my fragrance, fragrance cabinet. It's always going to be something I'm going to have within the overall rotation because I think you can wear this just about anytime, anywhere. So once again, from Marc Antoine Borat, Ganymede. Next up from the house of Thameen, London, we've got Carved Oud. The Mean London's Carved Oud. A little bit of a caveat with this one. Let's just say this is more so me always having something uh, of an Oud Wood style fragrance in my collection. I do have Oud, Oud Wood, but I've talked about this a few times on the channel, how I think this one is a superior version of Oud Wood. It did come out later, so it's definitely inspired by it, but uh, it has that same spicy, woody, uh, warmth to it that Oud Wood has, but it's a little bit deeper, a little bit more going on. Lots of Cipriol in this, giving it more of a green edge compared to Oud Wood. There's kind of a candied sweetness in this one. I'm not sure what that's coming from, but it's in there uh, that comes out in the heart of the fragrance. And there's also a lot of patchouli in this, and the patchouli that the Mean uses is, is stunning. It's one of my favorite patchouli accords that I find within a particular fragrance house. So I definitely would always like to have this in my collection, but as long as I have an Oud Wood style fragrance that is done well uh, in my collection, I'm gonna be happy. So this one just kind of takes that cake because I do think it is superior. So once again, from the house of the Mean, we've got Carved Oud. Next up, coming from the house of Zherzhov, we've got Alexandria II. Alexandria II from the house of Zherzhov. Zherzhov is another house similar to Amwaj where Frankly, there's a lot of fragrances I would want to keep around forever. I've got, I think, six, six, six Jerzhoff fragrances, if I'm not mistaken. And frankly, I want all of them to stick around uh, for the rest of my life. But I just chose to go with this one because it does have a kind of a special place in my heart because every time I smell this fragrance and wear it, I just have this happiness that overcomes me. I don't know why. The fragrance itself is not necessarily a happy scent. It's not really dark either. It's just very pleasant. Uh, I love the fruitiness that comes from this. There's some lavender to kind of give it a little bit of a freshness. There's a fizziness I get from this fragrance. I love how the oud that's used in here comes across. It is good quality oud, so you kind of get some of those facets that you get from like a uh, blue oud, but obviously there's just other stuff going on. Love the spiciness, the cinnamon, of course, the warmth that this has. It's just a great composition that is very popular from the house and uh, it's one that I really love to wear and I'm always gonna have this in my collection. 
uh, because it's just a, such an enjoyable scent for me. But again, Jerzhoff got plenty of stuff I would always have, but definitely had to highlight this one. Once again, from Jerzhoff, Alexandria 2. Moving on, from the House of Parfum de Empire, we've got Ombre Russe. Parfum de Empires, Ombre Russe. Now this fragrance here is a newer one in my collection. It's one I honestly have not worn a lot, but it is the best amber fragrance I've got to this point so far by a pretty wide margin. And being a big fan of amber fragrances and also being something that I wanna focus on uh, acquiring more of in the future, because this one's the best, I just gotta say, yeah, I'm gonna keep this one unless something comes along and knocks this one way down the list, which I would have to get a few amber fragrances to make that happen. So to go along with the amber accords in this fragrance, you got a very interesting champagne note in the opening, giving it not really a super fizzy opening, but it gives it this, this interesting sweetness that I didn't really notice before until I really started to wear this a little bit more. There's also a good combination of cinnamon and cumin giving some nice spice in this. The cumin is not overbearing to anybody that doesn't really like that smell of cumin. There is some tea accords in here giving it some greenness. There's also some woodiness to go along with this. It's a very nice amber fragrance, but it is done in a way to where you need to be a fan of amber scents compared to something like uh, Mason Francis Kirk John's Grand Soir where it's ambery but it has this nice warm spice to it and a lot of sweetness from notes like vanilla. This one is not presenting amber in that way. It's more of the traditional amber scent. But if you really like amber fragrances, this one might be worth checking out. It's also not that expensive off of discounters. But yeah, always gonna be in my collection unless I just get a ton of amber fragrances that I think are way better than this. Once again, from Parfum to Empire, Ombre, Ruth. Next up, from the house of Tom Ford, we've got Beau Du Jour. Tom Ford's Beau Du Jour. This one here, this one gives me my traditional aromatic fougere barbershop style fragrance fix. I am a big fan of fragrances like that. I'm always going to have at least a few options in my fragrance cabinet for that alone. And also, this is the scent style that I really grew up with. Curve for Men, I've talked about it before, being my first real signature scent before I even knew what that was. That was the first fragrance I wore as a kid with any regularity. I still have a bottle today just for that alone, just sentimental reasons. But this here gives me a more modern take while it still uh, adheres to that traditional style of barbershop scents. It's one of my most worn office scents. It's my most complimented office scent. Gotta always have this in my collection. Opens up with a lot of lavender in the opening, very clean and spicy lavender. Can be a bit overbearing uh, to those who may be new to the fragrance. It was for me when I first got my nose on it. But the star of this fragrance is the oak moss and the patchouli and amber accords that come out in the dry down, giving uh, just a boost of sweetness that you might not find in traditional aromatic fougeres, but just enough to also make it very modern, but still give that kind of wear. Absolutely love this fragrance. Gotta have it in my collection forever. Although, Aromatic Fougeres, there's plenty of great ones out there. This one could be overtaken, but for now, it's sticking around. From the house of Tom Ford, Beau Du Jour. Okay, and last but not least, we have got Aramis Eau de Toilette. Aramis Eau de Toilette. This one here is always gonna be in my collection, number one, I do actually love the scent. I don't, you know, not like the scent. This is not, not gonna be for everybody. It's very old school masculine scent, but I absolutely love it. But mainly I'm keeping this because this is something that my grandfather wore and it triggers a lot of memories when I smell this. To me, if I'm going to have a fragrance collection because I have sentimental or uh, nostalgic ties to many scents, I'm gonna have scents in my collection that give me that. Frankly, all those are always going to be in my collection. I think that's important because there are ways to kind of experience memories or experience nostalgia uh, in a different form from like a picture or a video or something like that. Scent can be a powerful memory trigger. And that's one, uh, one of the main reasons this is always going to be in my collection. Also, I don't think the fragrance is going anywhere. I mean, it's been going strong for longer than, well longer than I've been alive at this point, And it doesn't look like it's gonna go away. This is a very, uh, bright and kind of in your face 
fresh but dry, mossy, woody fragrance, also very aromatic. There's a number of spices in there, but they're very cooling. It's very traditional, clean, masculine fragrance, almost like maybe even a traditional aftershave. I'll be honest, if you were going to wear something like this today, it probably would not appeal to many people under the age of 30, but if you were had any experience with the fragrance before then, you know, I think you'll like it. And if you are a fan of traditionally masculine scents, this is definitely one of the ones to get your hands on. Once again, this is Aramis Eau de Toilette. I actually need to check out more from this house. They got some stuff that sounds like it would be very interesting for me to check out. All right, guys, and that's the list for today's video. That was 10 fragrances that I'm going to keep in my fragrance cabinet for Ever. Let me know down in the comments below what's one fragrance you definitely want to always have in your collection. Thank you guys for watching all the way into the end. I appreciate your support. Remember to be well and smell well, and I will see you in the next episode of The Fragrance Well. Have a good one.